bring in again Capitals John Kilduff and CNBC's Brian Sullivan. Just, just John, give us a taste of what it was like trading oil today and, and just what kind of worst fears are being factored in here. It was a spectacular free fall, Sarah. And uh, the, the news that came out sort of snuck up on, on the market. And uh, you sort of went from pricing in the best case scenario in terms of the rapid return of international travel to full pre-COVID levels. And with, with you know global oil demand already nearing that at 99 million barrels a day, uh, this throws a monkey wrench into a lot of calculus, especially in the aftermath of the SPR release and uh, with potentially more OPEC oil coming online if they stick to their current production scheme. So um, all of a sudden, you go from a very tight scenario outlook to one that is very potentially even oversupplied. What, what a twist, Brian. What, what are we expecting now from OPEC next week? Well, that's going to be the case. I mean, OPEC, remember, in their current deal, Sarah, they've got the ability under their contract that they signed all together to do a three-month pause anytime they want. I would not be surprised if they use this opportunity to do that. They already see an oversupply early next year. Of course, we had this release from the SPR, or at least that will be released. One wonders if that will be backed off because now you might have U.S. producers having to return oil at a higher cost than what they're going to get for it now. That's a different story. Listen, let me just say this. I spent the day texting, talking with oil traders, oil investors, oil executives, reading research. I cannot find one person or one thing that says today's sell-off was fundamentally justified. Not one. Goldman Sachs out with a note calling an extreme repricing as well. You had a lot of options activity. You had a lot of people that might have been long oil contracts. Now we're in backwardation. Sarah, I can't find anyone that says we deserve mm. to fall this much the fifth biggest decline in Brent crude futures history going back to 1988. Wow. Yeah, John, I mean, to that point, look, commodity markets, all markets overshoot. Commodity markets in the short term are going to get uh, kind of their own uh, sort of momentum, self-reinforcing momentum. But what do you think the market right now is uh, essentially discounting in the way of, uh, of a demand impact right here? It would seem relatively dramatic if Wednesday's prices were fundamentally based. Well, you know, I think oil is famous for overshooting, <laughs> both to the upside and, hey, going negative for a time. Why not, right? Um, but, uh, <laughs> but, but in all seriousness, I will say, you know, of recently, of late, um, there was a lot of hoopla, I like to say, in the market. You know, there was all kinds of triple-digit price forecasts. There were people playing in the deep end of the pool in terms of buying $200 uh, crude call options, uh, you know, for January and March of next year. So, you know, there was a lot of, uh, there was a bit of hype in this market. Uh, certainly the rebound we've seen in demand for crude oil globally, you know, has been strong and justifying some of the price increase. But it might have gotten away from us here a little bit to the upside. And certainly just the chatter of the SPR release got the, uh, the, the, the momentum kind of killed. And then when they announced it, it was kind of a ho-hum reaction to the actual announcement, but this is a forward-looking market that kind of knew what was coming at it, and it priced that in. So, Brian, is what you're hearing from the analysts that you were texting and talking to all day that this is a buying opportunity, that, that prices below $70 look fundamentally undervalued at this point, or it's just too soon to tell with this variant? Maybe too soon to tell, but pricing opportunity or buy opportunity for oil or for oil stocks, because they are different things. And, you know, I'm not Kramer. I'm not going to come on and say, do this, do that. But if we look at, say, the XOP or the OIH, they fell less than half of the price of oil. So to John's point, all this options activity, probably some negative gamma, this fancy options term, oil now in backwardation, meaning futures in May April futures contracts are trading at less than they are now. So the oil stocks did fall today, but they fell 5 and 6%. They didn't fall 12 and 13% as well. Remember, that spread between oil and oil stocks continues to grow. I haven't seen anything, but Sarah, it's very early. It says, we were bullish oil stocks, you know, yesterday, but now sure. we've changed our tune to John. This is a market that is famous for overreacting both directions. You know, John, I do see some data that when the oil market is in this current structure, when the near-term prices are higher than the distant futures contracts, typically you don't get steep sell-offs. In fact, Goldman was putting that out a couple days ago. Is there anything odd about the fact that we did get this air pocket today? 
Uh, only that, um, and certainly with this backward dated market that Brian was referencing, the front month being higher than the back month, it is a bullish term structure. It, 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 there's a disincentive under this st structure, pricing structure, to put oil into storage. So it sort of feeds on itself at times. I will tell you the backwardation had been weakening. Uh, we had gotten a signal uh, last week about the, the front month, second month coming in uh, rather markedly uh, one day last week. And so there was a bit of a warning sign that way. Uh, to the extent, and we did see, you know, this come in some more today, Mike, that uh, it's, it's a potential signal that, that the worm here is turning and that uh, we could be in for, for lower prices that the high may be in now for a yeah. while. So, so John, and guys, quickly, line. that may be why OPEC, okay. just, sorry, that may be why OPEC decides to pause. We'll see what they do, uh, because to John's point, why would OPEC, if they see an oversupply already early next year, which they do, and they said that prior to a couple why days ago, rampant? why would they pay to store oil? So that, that's the backwardation. You have no incentive to put oil into storage, have the time cost of money, eat your value, and then bring it out at a lower cost as well. That's why I wonder with this SPR release, some U.S. producers may be going to the president saying, hey, do we really want to do this? Because I might have to return the oil at a higher cost. So we'll see.